start the second half at Notre Dame Stadium. A look at our Valvoline halftime stats. Look at the big one is on the bottom. Penalties 10 for 65 by the Utes. No question. Neither offense lighting it up, but Notre Dame has made all the significant plays of the ball game. Notre Dame will kick off. David Ruffer has it teed up and ready to go. The dangerous Shaky Smithson awaits the kick. And Ruffer boots it to the one yard line where Smithson gathered it in. And away from the initial wave, fumble, and it fumbles the football. Notre Dame recovers. Wow. Talk about Notre Dame making every big play. You would expect Utah emotionally to come fired up out of the locker room. And what happened? Steve Filer, I believe, who's one of the best special teams players there, gets a piece, and then here comes the hit. In Austin Collingsworth, perhaps. And Daniel Smith. 28, right? Look at yep. that. It's Collingsworth, Collinsworth puts the helmet on the football. Collingsworth put his, uh, as you said, helmet right on the football to dislodge it. Wow. They Big are play. getting so much production on special teams from Collingsworth and Bennett Jackson, two freshman wide receivers. I love the toughness with both those kids. Collingsworth making a play. First down at the 26 of the Utes. Tommy Reese, first pass of the second half to the end zone. And a touchdown to Duval Kamara. Kamara, who's been the forgotten man this season in his senior year from Jersey City with his eighth catch of the campaign. First touchdown this season and the seventh of his career. 26 yards to the senior on senior day, Duval Kamara from the freshman. Wow. What a huge play. Good job. Ruffer for the extra point. And it is good. So bang, bang. Austin Collinsworth puts his helmet on the football. Notre Dame recovers, and then the touchdown, Reese to Kamara. There's Kamara's route. The safety's got to make this play, and he can't get over the top. They roll to the right. Excellent blocking. Safety takes a poor angle. I don't get Blecken's angle at all. Kamara runs away. Reese puts it on him. Well, that looks easy, doesn't it, Tom? So a disheartening beginning for the Utes, and Reese celebrates his second touchdown pass of this game and the sixth of his young Notre Dame career. As you said, we figured the Utes would come out with renewed energy, a tongue lashing, no doubt, from their coach after appearing to be flat in the first half. And they fumble the kickoff thanks to Austin Collinsworth. And then in one play, Notre Dame strikes for the TD, and they're up 21-3. If you put the special team tapes on for Notre Dame, 28 and 86 flash all the time. Two freshman wideouts, and again, I can't underscore how much I love toughness in wide receivers. That tells me down the road, not only will they catch the football, but they'll also cut. Smithson on the sideline with Jeremy Brooks replacing him, but he fields it halfway through the end zone and takes a knee for the touchback. So Smithson, who had fumbled the kickoff to start the third quarter, was on the sideline for that one, fielded by Brooks. And now Coke Zero explores the playbook of possibilities. And Harrison Smith made one of the big plays of the game early. Play action when a quarterback rolls away. The safety's got to jump the deep crossing route. Bootleg, there's the throw. Harrison Smith undercuts the route. The recognition and the execution was phenomenal. Coach Zero playbook of possibilities. Good defensive play so far by the Irish. The longest drive for Utah today in their seven possessions was that eight play field goal drive, their first of the game. Eddie Wide gets the call and gets two or three yards. Manti Johnson, Te Brian Smith, and Manti Teo, everybody in on that one. Yeah, Ta Teo doesn't make the tackle, but watch the recognition and the block destruction. Attacks the guard right there, allows 
58 Smith to come in and clean it up. And again, you don't have to make every tackle, but you've got to have your correct run fits in the Notre Dame defense. Jordan Wynn. Utes quarterback gets the snap. Shovel pass just dumped it off. Eddie Wilde is there and is driven back. Manti Teo was right in his whiskers when he got the football. Good linebacker play. Teo Shembo. Creates another third and long situation. Third most by Notre Dame freshman last year and on his way to the most by a Notre Dame sophomore this season. Third down and eight. Utah's favorite pass set. Cross motion now to a three by one. That's the tight end in motion. Win stands in the pocket across the middle. Man wide open. And the catch made by Moy Ai. Moy Ai has a first down. That's a gain of 25 yards. One of the biggest plays of the game by the Utes. Moi came in motion and then settled in the middleman of a tight bunch. A quick hit, but then Teo jumps the short crosser when he's got to get deep. And here's a sack. Prince Shembo with the sack of Jordan Wynn. I'm telling you, they love this young man. Prince Shembo coming off the edge. Put him in a three-point stance, let him destroy the integrity of the running back's block, comes off him, and that's an explosive young freshman, six foot two, 243 pounds. And Tom, for the first time in a long time in Notre Dame Stadium, you can sense momentum going the Irish way. Three and a half sacks this season for Shimbo, the freshman from Charlotte. Wins pass is caught and then dropped immediately to the ground as Brooks made the reception and hit by Gary Gray, preventing any further gain. You know, you get second and 20, you can do whatever you want. You can bring pressure, you can drop in coverage. Bobby Diaco typically likes to drop in coverage. Four man pressure, they drop seven, and that's what the Irish corners are good at. Gray, Darren Wall, Blanton, they will all come up and tackle you. Only three yards on the completion. So another third and long. We've said that a lot. Win finds an outlet and it's incomplete. Intended for wide from the backfield. A lot of true freshman defenders stepping up. Kona Schwenke, the defensive end, getting pressure on right after the Prince Shembo sack. And Tom, we talked a little bit of, with Brian Kelly about burning all the red shirts off the freshmen this year, but because of the amount of injuries they've had to. Selwood again in punt formation. Low drive. Hit, hit an up man, but he's able to turn around and get it for a moment. That was Blanton. That was smart. Really, really smart. Short punt Blanton. hit Blanton and he. See the cards being held up for the freshman quarterback Tommy Reese, who hands it off to Sierra Wood. Wood found a seam. Made a little push to his marker and rips off about eight yards on first down. Martinez made the tackle. Really love when you can see an offensive center and a guard get out in front. Watch these two guys get out in front of Sierra. Bang, there there's a pull. Braxton Cave turns it up in the hole. The lead set guard, Chris Watt, gets the key block. That's how you draw it up. That's how Vince Lombardi did it in Yankee Stadium years and years ago. There are the cards held up for Reese. Those symbols mean something to him, if not necessarily to anybody else. That's a toss to Wood. Wood able to turn the corner and get outside for a big game. Down short of the 35-yard line before Taplin Ross pushes him out. That's an 18-yard run by C.A. Wood. Again, Michael Floyd's unselfishness this year extends to the blocking game. Watch him get on the corner, Burton. That's the key block. It's a quick pitch. They beat the hang defender, and you got to take care of the corner, and that's exactly what Michael Floyd does. 38-yard line of the Utes. 
Reese pocket rolls right with him. He throws back to Floyd. And Michael Floyd, he uses a blocker. He's to the sideline. Still on his feet and finally knocked out of bounds. Michael Floyd with a gain of 24 yards. See, I really like Tommy Reese when they move the pocket. I liked it a couple weeks ago against Tulsa. I like it here. Really good patient. Double cross route. Locates Floyd underneath. He picks up a bunch of blocks. Sierra Wood was the first one. That's it. Use the pick. Why not? Looked like a matador as he uh, dodged Michael <laughs> Floyd. All he needed was a cape. 14-yard line now. Irish on the move again. Sierra Wood. Utes able to stack him up for a short game that time. Chaz Walker, their leading tackler, in on the play. Taylor Dever, the right tackle, did a nice job out there. And you finally, you see some rhythm. You feel some momentum and rhythm to this Irish offense. And that's what it takes in college football. Just, you know, young guys get an emotional lift with a big fumble, and all of a sudden, they look like a different team. There's Dever, a senior who can apply for another year of eligibility. 36 seniors all told, but 11 of whom can apply for another year. For the end zone, Reese has a man. It is caught for a touchdown again by Kamara. <laughs> Tommy Reese <laughs> got a big lift from Zach Martin, one of his tackles, after he threw Duvall Kamara on senior day. The senior with his second touchdown reception of the game, and Kyle Whittingham and the Utes have been shocked by the Irish here today. Ruffer, the extra point. Notre Dame off the bye week, needing time to heal emotionally and physically. And they come out and take it right to the 14th ranked Utes. It's now Notre Dame 28 and Utah 3. It's been all fighting Irish offense and defense and special teams today. And off again to Asiata. He'll have a first down this time as he crosses the 40 yard line. For Asiata, a gain of nine. Lua, uh, Capron Moore, Lewis Moore, Capron Lewis Moore makes the tackle. Alex? Hey, Tom, well, one of the things that Brian Kelly told me at the half was that he knew coming into this game defensively they could not give up any of those big explosive plays. Had won the 25-yard game by the tight end of Utah, but he said keeping Utah in between the hashes has been really key to this defense, and from there, everything else is kind of set up and allowed them to play the way they have, Tom. And indeed, as Asiata once again gets his third straight carry. I'll, I'll tell you what's interesting. I think Kyle win, winning uh, Willingham down 28 to three has decided he's got to calm this thing down a little bit. Come out running the football. They were in their heavy set that time. Defensive tackle Nelly Aasa in at tight end. And I think he's just said, OK, let's get this thing calmed down. There's still seven and a half minutes left. We've got a quarter and a half or more of football. Get it calmed down. Move the football. Stop this momentum. Coach Whittingham, who's had such a remarkable record at the University of Utah. And here they come out into their Wildcat formation. Asiata takes the direct snap. Falls across the 45-yard line after being hit by Zeke Mata. And Mata did an excellent job coming from a deep safety position. Remember, the Wildcats in the game. Here he is here, and look at the heavy set over here. He recognizes it. All the blockers get eaten up, and now a one-on-one -on -one tackle in the open field. And Tom, I said it earlier this year, the thing I'm most impressed with with the Irish secondary is their ability to tackle in the open field. Their corners and their safeties all tackle. And then step off a penalty against uh, Kelly's defenders. And so Utah will take the ball all the way into Notre Dame territory with a first down at the 38 yard line. Penalty was on Blanton messing around with Shaky Smithson after the play. Asiata. Asiata. 
Asiata to the 35 yard line just inside it. Shembo the tackle for the Irish. So Utah has a drive going here as we said their best drive of the game was the first one which wound up in a field goal. And now trying to keep the drive going looking at that Xerox first down line. Remember that first field goal was after getting a short field because Notre Dame went for it on fourth and three and didn't get it. Last six possessions by the Utes have wound up in a punt. Asiata. Brian Smith hitting first. Then uh, a lot of other defenders came along, including Catherine Lewis Moore. Senior Brian Smith having a big day here on Senior Day. Nice job facing him up in the hole. To me, this has got to be four down territory here for Utah, down 28 to 3. Be patient. Here comes the noise in the building. Third down and four. That was Asiata. Yeah, he's going to he, no gain on that. He slipped in the hole. That's been their go to play in the power game. They've got Sean Asiata in at fullback and watch the cut and he slides. No gain. That's going to bring up a critical fourth down situation here. Tom, I don't think they've thrown the ball once in this drive. Have they, they have not. It's been all Asiata. All Asiata all the time on this one. And now they're faced with a fourth and four and we'll call a timeout. Timeout Utes with 455 left in the third. They're down 28 3. On his final appearance at Notre Dame Stadium. Shaky Smithson back in the game at wide receiver. Jordan Wynn under pressure completes the pass. Smithson able to duck the first man still on his feet. And out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. Shaky Smithson he got that nickname back in a tough part of Baltimore where he grew up because when they played street football nobody could catch him. <laughs> and you know Tom great job by Jordan Wynn identifying where the man coverage is. Look the safety's over here. He can't help out. You've got man coverage and your best receiver runs a little whip route. Great accuracy breaks the tackle of Gary Gray and makes a big play out of it. Gain of 24 yards first and goal for the Utes. Asiata stopped short of the five yard line. Gary Gray will get credit for the tackle. I give Kyle Whittingham and his offensive staff credit for being patient. You get down 28 to 3. And Tom, we've talked about them coming out of their, their offense so early a week ago against TCU. This drive, one pass, all the rest have been runs. If they score here, they're back in the football game. And they're in the red zone for the first time today. Here's the give to Dunn. Notre Dame ready for it. They stop Reggie Dunn. It'll be third down and goal. Great read by the linebacker Teo and then the, the contain outside. Watch Teo and then watch Walls. Teo recognizes the jet motion, forces it out wide. Walls does his job as the contain man, and that's the definition again of team defense. Went for a loss of two. So now from the eight, third down and goal. Watch crossing routes, rub routes. Utah's favorite in here. Win fakes the handoff and throws to the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Deontay, Devontae Christopher, and he and Gary Gray sort of fighting in the end zone. Christopher wanted a flag, but no flag forthcoming. Gary Gray is a physical guy. Inside technique, he sees the football the whole way. Now you can question whether or not, but look at they both have hands on each other. Typically, I'll tell you if I think it's fast interference. He had his arm around the 
but Devontae Christopher was pushing just as much as Gary Gray. So fourth down and goal from the eight. Wynn takes a low snap, fires for the end zone, incomplete. No flags, Notre Dame has held. Jordan Wynn identified the man-to-man -man on the back side. Gary Gray, same matchup, Gray and Devontae Christopher. Here it is, he's gonna cross. Watch Gray from the back side, does he wrap that right arm around him? Look like a good play to me. Notre Dame takes over. Notre Dame football brought to you by Valvoline. They've been tested, built, and driven like no other. And now they're being offered like no other. Come to the winter event and get an exceptional offer on the Mercedes-Benz of your dreams. It's our way of showing a little holiday spirit. The offer ends soon. You were saying prime credit. My name Peggy. You have problem? Peggy? Okay. Lost my car. Need a replacement sent to my hotel tomorrow. One month. Let's try this again. Do you believe in yourself? Yes. I believe in you too, Peggy. You could be my go-to guy. Or girl. Now stand tall and get out to replace my card. You inspire me. Three weeks. Okay, let's start over. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover and get the help you need when you need it. It pays to Discover. Go, dude, go! Are you sure? The parachute was packed right! Probably! Sometimes probably doesn't cut it. That's why Valvoline guarantees your engine up to 300,000 miles. Sign up at Valvoline.com. Select 55 from Budweiser. The superior taste makes it select. The 55 calories make it the lightest beer in the world. Sunday night, Tom Brady leads the Patriots into Steel City to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Championship contenders face off in America's Game of the Week. Patriots, Steelers, Sunday night is football night only on NBC. Rocking and rolling here at Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish up 28 to 3. Let's go back to that last play. Gary Gray involved in two bang bang plays with Devontae Christopher. Look at the right arm on the back right there. Now, former defensive back that I am, I would tell you that that looks like pass interference to me. Is it ticky tack? A little bit, maybe, but that is a critical, critical play in the game. And there's no question, Tom, contact before the ball got there. But no flag, and Notre Dame takes over. At the eight-yard line with a handoff to Wood. Sierra tripped up as he totes it across the 10 by J.J. Williams. Look at Christopher, who is locked up with Gary Gray and those two passes to the end zone. And Notre Dame passing, Tommy Reese, who opened uh, the game, first half, eight of 13, 43 yards and a touchdown. In this third quarter in two possessions, look at that, four for four, 79 yards and two scores. Yeah, and he threw the ball 54 times against Tulsa. In my opinion, if he threw it any more than about 25 to 30 today, they were going to lose the ball game. So you can see efficient use of the young man's arm. Wood, nice cut back. Then slammed down in a hurry by Shelby. You know, Tom, we were talking last night about this Utah team, and you know the more tape I've watched about them, we talked about the BCS and who belongs and who doesn't, and and the non-BCS schools, and the more tape I watched of Utah, I came to the conclusion that they're really well coached by Kyle Whittingham. However, from a personnel standpoint, their athletic ability is slightly above average. So to me, they're not a top 10 team. They're a solidly coached team, and this is not an upset. Notre Dame belongs in the same category as this team athletically. Reese resets Eifert and then hands it off for a first and run by Wood. Chris Stewart in his final uh, home game with the block to Springwood on that one. Nice call, Tom Hammond, doing the analyst work. Left guard, exactly right. Senior gets up in the hole, bang, 351 pounds. That's like a snowball downhill, man. You can't stop that. Wow. 
And uh, as we've talked all season, amazing, maybe the only man that is in law school while playing football. If that doesn't work out for him, if football doesn't work or law school doesn't work out, he can always do be a time management expert, huh? <laughs> I give that kid a ton of credit, man. Wood will try the right side uh, with no success. Drag down fans on a horse collar on Shelby. And Shelby made the play. Loss of five. Brian Kelly wants the horse collar. Now, initially, this is a great play by Shelby. Look at him split a double. Comes up high on the left side. Now, where's that right hand? From there, I don't know where it was. The left hand was up high and right there. Uh, that's a horse collar, is it not? Yeah, it looked real close, Tom. <laughs> Pretty good upper body strength, though. One yeah. arm. Second down and 15. Keep it on the ground. Wood dancing and dodging and breaking free for a first down to the 35-yard line. Lamar Chapman makes this tackle after a 20-yard gain. Remember, this is the Irish running game that really looked anemic in the first couple of possessions, and suddenly they got a big run from Jonas Gray, and since then they've been able to run the football with Wood and Gray. Stay with your run game. Chris Thorpe, turn it up in the hole. Great job. Now look at the shake and bake. Sierra Wood, one of the most highly recruited high school running backs out of the state of California. If you give him a sliver, he'll make you pay. And that was the final play of the third quarter. It ends with Notre Dame leading Utah 28 to 3. We'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Valvoli. Chuck has one thing that makes him a good spy, and he's lost it. But is it worth dying to get it back? My method is physical, psychological, brutal. Let's get physical. New Chuck, Monday, 8, 7 central on NBC. Automotive technicians with a drive for ASE certification start their professional careers at IntelliTech College. For life-changing careers, it's all in the numbers. Over two decades of quality education. 14% projected employment growth through 2016. Pay and demand for these positions are high. Get better training, better career placement, and a better way to change your life. Call IntelliTech College in Grand Junction at 970-245-8101. Took my crashed up Chevy to Mako. Look at it now. After my accident, Mako fixed my BMW. Handled insurance, rental car, it was easy. That's why customer satisfaction is so high. So choose Mako for collision. And if you need repairs, check out Mako now. Right now, Mako will help with your rental expense while your car is in for collision repair. Yes, that's a free rental car up to $25 a day for up to five days. Bring your car to Mako and take advantage of our free rental car offer. Whatever your uh-oh, better get Mako. It's the season for giving and giving thanks. And at Grand West Kia, we want to say thank you by donating $100 from every sale to the local charity of your choice. Buy any new Kia Rio, Sorento, Sporty, Optima, or Sedona, and we'll donate $100 in your name to the charity of your choice. All models are on sale for this event and start as low as $12,000. Grand West Kia, we want to see you in a Kia. Hey, 11 News viewers, we've scored a really cool getaway and we think one of our viewers deserves to win it. Round trip airfare for a family of four to Denver on the Denver Air Connection. Tickets to the King Tut exhibit at the Denver Art Museum. And good old fashioned family fun at the Curtis Hotel in downtown Denver. How do you win? It's easy. Just watch 11 News weekdays at 530. On cue, be the 11th caller and you're qualified. Winner will be announced on November 25th. 11 News, we're everywhere. Natalie Pallone on 11 News, Grand Junction's news leader. Our Valvoline score by quarter shows that the Irish dominated the third, outscoring Utah 14 to nothing to build their lead to 28 to 3. Utah scoring a field goal on their first possession of the game after they held Notre Dame on fourth down. And since then, the Irish defense has dominated, and the offense has come alive under that freshman quarterback. Tommy Reese hands it to Sierra Wood. Wood with his sixth carry on this drive. He's carried every play so far on this drive. That was made by Bill Anderson. 
Kings. I really like their offensive balance when they get in the rhythm like that, where they're not throwing every down, where you've got to be afraid they're going to punch you in the face a little bit, and then you come back with play action. I think Brian Kelly has found something that works pretty well this game. Combination of the run game, and I love Tommy Reese on play action. Reese under pressure got it to Floyd. Floyd gang tackled right at the first down marker. Matt Martinez first to wrap up Michael Floyd. That was a little double screen look. He first looked to his left where they had a screen set up for running back Sierra Wood and then a little wide receiver screen underneath to Michael Floyd. And it's good for a first down. From the 45 yard line Tommy Reese getting his first start today and uh, growing up right in front of our eyes. Sierra Wood the workhorse. Gain of two. This is Wood's 16th carry of the game. Irish very content Tom take their time here pace is slowed down make sense take your time run the clock plays being signaled in that Eifert out wide with a safety trying to force Utah to make a decision how they're going to use their defensive backs against a split tight end man coverage Reese hangs it up for Floyd. It goes incomplete. Michael Floyd almost came down with a big catch. Floyd underneath coverage, really well covered by Burton that time. That's been a heck of a battle all day long. Six feet, 190 pound Burton against the six foot three. Look at that shot right there with the left hand stripping the ball away from Floyd. Burton's had a tough day. Pass interference, touchdown pass against them, but heck of a play there. That incompletion to Floyd broke a string of completions by Tommy Reese. He had hit eight in a row before that miss as he signals for a timeout. Too many men on the field. So timeout taken by Notre Dame. That is their first of the second half. They lead it 28-3. I love caring for my family, but even I can't do it all. So I got ADT Pulse. Now I do things like arm my home security system right from my phone. Introducing ADT Pulse Solutions, a new way to help protect and manage your home remotely. But we learned the real value of ADT when someone tried to break in. ADT got the alarm and notified the police. It's good to know ADT helps protect our home and the most important people in it. Now save $250 on new ADT Pulse. Visit ADTPulse.com. An accident doesn't have to slow you down. From new car replacement and guaranteed repairs to accident forgiveness, we do all we can to help you move on. Liberty Mutual Auto Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? First is fast. First is 4G. The play is nice with 3G as well. First has an 8 megapixel HD camera and can stream live video to the web. First has an HDMI out. First shares Wi-Fi with eight devices at once. First is not Stephen First, who played Flounder at Animal House. First has a kickstand for watching video. What will you do first with Evo, the first 4G phone? Only from Sprint, the Now Network. Notre Dame fans, listen up. NBCSports.com has the authentic gear you got to have for the big game at Yankee Stadium this season. All your Notre Dame needs and your official Notre Dame versus Army Yankee Stadium gear. Go to NBCSports.com slash shop. There's a proud papa, Bill Reese, Tommy's father. Uh, Tommy telling us uh, football has been a part of his life as long as he can remember. His dad, Bill, an assistant at UCLA, and 
in the front office of several NFL teams Chicago Cleveland San Francisco Kansas City now involved in the football operations at Northwestern University and here to uh, see his son play today along with Tommy's brother Danny who is a UCLA senior and Tommy just throws that one away behind Michael Floyd. Dad's a very highly respected personnel guy in the league for a lot of years and, and coached with one of my favorite people in the world at UCLA with Terry Donahue for a bunch of years. You know how they got that program right. revved up. And I think one of the sons is there, right? Playing football, Tom? Yeah, Danny, his brother, uh, Tommy's brother. He's a holder on the team. As Ben Turk is on to punt. Toward Smithson, who says, get away from it. And goes out of bounds. About the 23 yard line. Well, Sunday night is football night, and tomorrow night, Tom Brady and the Patriots will head to Pittsburgh to take on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bob Costas hosts Football Night in America live from Heinz Field, and coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on NBC. Tom, I think that's the best football game in the NFL this weekend, and I've always believed. Bill Belichick is most dangerous when coming off a bad loss. Cleveland embarrassed him. Peyton Hillis had a big game. I think that's going to be an epic battle in Pittsburgh, and I can't wait to watch it. Utah trying to get something going here in the fourth quarter. And the pass is complete to Smithson. And shaky tumbling over players. Is able to get a first down. That's a gain of 12. There's that crossing route I've been talking about all day long. Coming from both directions, almost a little rub. He comes right past his own guy, catches the football, and he's dangerous when he has it. We mentioned the shaky group, but a tough part of Baltimore. Here's the pass. That one is caught by Matthews. Shaky Smithson grew up in a tough part of Baltimore, he said, went to Frederick Douglass High School, then went to junior college and wound up at the University of Utah. He has, with his mother's, wait for this play, it's a handoff to wide. With his mother's permission, he has become the legal guardian of his younger brother, Anthony, who is 16 years old. And Anthony uh, doing great under his brother's tutelage with a four point GPA and playing football. Quite a young man, Shaky Smithson, who has uh, really turned his life into something very positive after tough circumstances growing up. Eddie Wide makes that catch. Alex? Tom, you mentioned Anthony, uh, the brother of Shaky Smith, doing better than OK living with his brother in Utah last weekend. He played in his football, uh, high school football semifinals. He's on his way this coming weekend to play in the championship game for Highland High School. His brother, Anthony, a quarterback there in high school, Tom. Well, Shaky himself, quite an athlete in his Days at Frederick Douglass High School, all city in football, basketball, and baseball. Great story taking care of his brother like that. It's really cool. And the pass to wide open, and it's complete to Brooks. Brooks came absolutely wide open downfield, and Jordan Wynn found him for one of the biggest plays of the day for the Utah offense. Robert Blanton got way too carried away down here with the redirection to number one and he gets beat right in behind him. After a 20 yard gain, Utes with the first down at the Notre Dame 27. Utah on the move and another wide open man. This time it's Christopher. He makes the catch just short of the first down. Remember this is a Utah team averaging 41 points a game, ninth in the FBS. And held to only a field goal, but on the move here in the fourth quarter. And the same route combination again that time against Blanton, where they high low the corner and cover two. Correct decision each time by Jordan Wynn. Man to man coverage. Blitz comes from Notre Dame. They pick it up. And so Wynn goes to the end zone in traffic, and it is incomplete intended for Brooks and broken up by Robert Blanton who's having quite a game today. Blanton's a five foot eleven corner with long arms. I think he's very good at press. He's up against Jeremy Brooks and Brooks is going to run the seam route. 
very quick receiver. Blanton's right in his hip pocket. What I love is that he turns, located the football. Look at him. That's a lost art amongst defensive backs. Finding the football, making a play on it, rather than panicking and having an interference call. Really good job by Robert Blanton. You said Blanton having an excellent game, and now Jordan Wynn, who had hit five in a row on this drive until that one was knocked incomplete. Wynn again throws back. Caught. Nice move by Wide. Able to dodge the first defender, and then Schwenke chases him down. That's an eight yard gain for Utah. If I have one complaint with Manti Teo's game, it's in the pass game and coming to balance when you have to make a tackle. Had a chance to make a play, overran it, gave him a first down. First down, Utah. Remember earlier, Notre Dame stopped him after the Utes had first and goal from the eight. Here's the Wildcat formation. It's Eddie Wide, direct snap. Up the middle, ran into his own man as the uh, Irish defenders, uh, led by Teo, able to stack it up in the middle. Sean Swinar, the nose tackle, did a nice job also on that play. Remember, here, here's inside. Take a look at those guys. Nice job inside out right there. Wildcat, you know they want to run the football. Second down and nine. Jordan Wynn back in the shotgun. Low snap, he got it. Plenty of time, drills it. It's complete to Smithson. Got away from the first man, almost a second before he slammed down by Manti Teo. But the whistles had sounded. Tom, there are different ways to defense a crossing route, and they went back to it again. Watch the inside linebackers pass off the crossing route as it goes across. Teo will be the second guy to pick it up. Here comes the cross, and then right there you see number 56, Kerry Neal, hands it off to Manti Teo, who picks it up. Shaky doesn't want to go down, does he? <laughs> no, he's still shaky. He's a thickly built kid from the waist down. That was a complete pass for a loss of three, so it's now third down and 13. And the pass incomplete intended for Brooks. Well, once again, Utah drives down the field, gets into the red zone, and now faced with a fourth down. They went on fourth down earlier and were held by Notre Dame from fourth and goal. This one fourth down and 13. They can't make a first down without scoring. And they got on the big stage last week against TCU, got down, and they started <laughs> dropping passes. Look, noise, right? Coach Kelly turned cheerleader. <laughs> noise. Best way for a defensive lineman to get get off is with high crowd noise. Here they come. Fourth down. Here comes Notre Dame. Hang it for the end zone. And incomplete. <laughs> Intended for Brooks. Defended by Gary Gray. And Notre Dame holds again on fourth down in the red zone. Heavy, heavy pressure from the inside. Forced the throw quick. I think that, that Coach Kelly's going to allow this freshman to throw the football down the field very far at all in this situation. Ball. In fact, he'll hand it off to Wood. Yeah. Nice run by Wood uh, when it didn't appear that he would be able to get much at all. He is still short of the first down, but he got 11 yards. Yeah, that's the right call. Forget the first down. Put the ball in Sierra Wood's hands. Don't put it up for grabs and punt. The defense has played extremely well all day. I think Coach Kelly recognizing that. Well, Brian Kelly has had a tough few weeks. The embattled Coach Kelly leading cheers today as his uh, Irish defense holds off the high scoring Utes twice in the red zone and saw his offense finally get untracked after a slow start and saw his special teams play well too. So it has been an all round contribution from the Irish here on senior day. Notre Dame takes a timeout as the clock has ticked down to five minutes and 46 seconds. 28 to 3. It'll be a punting situation for the Irish when we return.
<laughs> Close enough just isn't good enough. If your car is in an accident, make sure it's repaired with the right replacement parts. Take the scary out of life with travelers. Call or click now for an agent or quote. Don't. McRib is back at McDonald's. Tangy, sweet hickory barbecue sauce made with 100% tender, juicy, boneless pork topped with pickles and onions on our classic McRib bun. Did we mention the barbecue sauce? The simple joy of saucy goodness. USA Prime Credit. My name Peggy. You have problem? Peggy? Okay. Lost my car. Need a replacement sent to my hotel tomorrow. One month. Let's try this again. Do you believe in yourself? Yes. I believe in you too, Peggy. You could be my go-to guy. Or girl. Now stand tall and get out to replace my car. You inspire me. Three weeks. Okay, let's start over. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover and get the help you need when you need it. It pays to Discover. Notre Dame bidding for its first senior day win in three years, leading Utah 28 to 3. And for the Utes, who won their first eight games of the season, in danger of having back to back losses. Then Turk putting on fourth down and a beauty. Smithson gathers it in and immediately is hit. There's a penalty flag down. Could be interference with the, the ability to field the punt. Then they might get a personal foul as they throw Smithson down on the sideline after obviously was out of bounds. Yeah, I think this was Bennett Jackson, the freshman wide receiver I've been so high on all season on the special teams. Kick catch interference. Kicking team number 86. 15 yards on the foul. First down. There used to be a two or three yard halo. It's no longer that. It's just a common sense application of giving him enough time. You can see he's basically touching him. I, I love the coverage. I love the location, but you've got to stop, bend your knees, and you can't make contact like that. That's a good call and a freshman mistake. So the correct call made on Jackson, and the step off puts it into Irish territory at the 48 yard line. Utes running out of time. That pass is complete to Christopher. Ducks out of bounds to stop the clock after picking up 11 yards and a first down. Been really impressed with that front group. He got Jordan Wynn got hit again by Ethan Johnson. It was only a three man rush, but they've had constant pressure on Jordan Wynn. Wynn gets rid of the football, tries to protect himself. Ethan Johnson coming off the edge. Painful, Tom. Tough afternoon for the young Utah freshman, or not freshman, but sophomore quarterback. Jordan Wynn, and they're tending to him and helping him on his feet. And Kane, Terrence Kane, who was a starter last year, is warming up, and uh, if Win can't go and we would assume he can't. He's been sitting there on the turf for a while now. Uh, it'll be Kane that will come on for Utah. But I said a minute ago that it was a uh, all round effort today by Notre Dame. You agree with that? I agree. I think for the first time this year, Tom, we've seen a four quarter effort in all three phases. And we can talk about Tommy Reese and Deval Kamara and that offense, but I'm going to start with special teams. Number one, the punt block for seven points. Number two, Austin Collingsworth on the second half kickoff, forcing the fumble. The next play, they get Camaro in the end zone. So I think it's been a combination of defense, special teams, and then Tommy Reese in that offense. So Jordan Wynn walks to the sideline. Well, Notre Dame needed something good to happen after the blowout loss to Navy, after the tragic death of Declan Sullivan, after the last minute loss to Tulane. And they came out ready to play today. So here is Terrence Kane. As we said, he was a starter last year. Started eight times. Hit 64. He's played in six games this season and hitting at a 76% clip. He's thrown six touchdown passes without an interception this year. And more dangerous with his feet than win. 
Kane's first pass behind his intended receiver Smithson and incomplete. Tough on, on a kind of cold, windy, rainy day to come in without a chance to warm up when you're down 28 to 3 and you've got to start pumping the football immediately. Poor throw to a wide open receiver, but you got to give the kid a chance to get loose. Well, this will go down in the books if Notre Dame can hold on as an upset. They were underdogs today, and Penn State is leading Ohio State, Georgia, and Auburn. Georgia had been leading, but that one tied at halftime now. Northwestern upsets Iowa. TCU having their way with San Diego State. Here's Kane scrambling around. Hit. Dropped at the 45 yard line. Hit hard by Ben Ty Teo. Teo got a running start and put it on Terrence Kane for a loss of eight. Open field tackle. Man Ty Teo explosive. Watch what happens with Kane, where he's very dangerous with his feet. Feels pressure, comes back to his left. Here comes Manti. He's going to explode into his underneath shoulder. Great tackle from the inside out. Understanding where his help was. Boy, that's a good play by Manti Teo. And Jordan Wynn returns to the quarterback spot for the Utes. Whistles will stop that play. Mm. All start on the offense. Number 11, five yard penalty. Third down. Luke Matthews for the false start. Remember, the Utes had uh, several of those in the first half, false start penalties, and that's their 11th penalty overall of the game, but their first of the second half. Cardinal sin for a wide receiver to be offside or in any kind of motion. All you've got to do, you don't have to hear anything. Look down the line of scrimmage at the football and move when it moves. Which is rapidly collapsing and then finds Brooks. Brooks out of bounds, stopping the clock at 347. Notre Dame trying to break a string of 11 straight losses to AP ranked teams. And the Utes come in ranked number 14. Shembo against the left tackle Cullen, who was the number one tackle in the country coming out of junior college, overwhelms him. Tom, look at the leverage a six foot two, 243 pound freshman gets on Cullen. Just a great job. Irish also have been undergoing a November drought in recent years. And as we said, two straight senior day losses the last two seasons. So a lot of black marks about to be erased. Christopher. Swinky collapsed Christopher and the Irish have another stop for their defense. Jordan wins had a rough day in front of the Notre Dame defense. You know, I've been looking at the numbers and I think our campus is spending too much money on printing. I'd like to put you in charge of cutting costs. Calm down. I know that it is not your job. What I'm saying, excuse me? All right, fine. No, you don't have to do it, okay? Notre Dame knows it's better for Xerox to control their printing costs so they can focus on winning on and off the field. Are you sure I can't? Okay, no, I get it. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. This was me, best ribs in Nelson County. But I wasn't winning any ribbons managing my diabetes. It was so complicated. There was a lot of information out there, but it was frustrating trying to get the answers I needed. Then my company partnered with United Healthcare. They provided on-site screenings, healthy cooking tips. That's a recipe I'm keeping. Turning complex data into easy tools. We're 78,000 people looking out for 70 million Americans. That's health in numbers. United Healthcare. Since 1863, the dreams of millions have taken off with us, U.S. Bank. As our country has grown stronger, so have we. Today, we are one of America's strongest banks, focused on the future and eager to lend. So every dream, big or small, can keep growing stronger. Imagine what you can do when you have all of us serving you. U.S. Bank. Two teams that have dominated the last decade. The first to win six Super Bowls. Patriots, Steelers. Sunday night is football night only on NBC. And make every Sunday night a pop-up.
Papa John's night. Big afternoon for Gary Gray in the Irish defense and time now for doing the right thing presented by Northwestern Mutual. They made big plays on two consecutive red zone series. Third down. Devontae Christopher sees the football makes a play. No pass interference. Very next play. Questionable but they don't call it. Next series. Fourth down again. Ball up in the air. Gray locates it. Knocks it down. Big game for Gary Gray. That's our Northwestern Mutual doing the right thing. Notre Dame Stadium on Senior Day. Tom Hammond, Mike Mayock, Alex Flanagan, Rob Highland, our producer, Andy Rosenberg, our director today. First down, Irish after holding Utah, and they take over at their 37 with a run to Robert Hughes, who's making his final appearance at Notre Dame Stadium. You now, Gary Gray is one of those guys that's listed as a senior, has the opportunity if he chooses, and Notre Dame would like him to come back next year. And Gary Gray to me is a guy that just uh, very very physical corner with an opportunity to showcase some cover skills today and he had a huge game. How about some smiles on the Notre Dame sideline frowns of course on the Utah side but the last two seasons on senior day there have been no smiles on the Notre Dame side. Chases him down. That's a 13 yard gain for Robert Hughes. Good for Robert Hughes, the senior. 5'11, 245. Watch the big fellas up front. The pull. Great block up front by Andrew Nuss. Lower the pad level. Run over the freshman safety. Blacken, who's trying to rip the football free. They're having some fun right now, Tom, and I think they deserve it. First down, that's our first down line brought to you by Xerox. The ball right on the midfield stripe. It's like the same play. Almost the same result as Hughes lowers his pads and gets a couple more yards, a total of seven on that run. He's having some fun, and, and Brian Blecken is not. The true freshman safety got run over. New quarterback in the game, huh, Tom? This is Brian Castello. We have seen him signaling in plays almost all season long, and now he gets to get into the game. Castello is on for the Irish at quarterback. Good for him. As the seniors are getting uh, some playing time now with the game, Tommy Reese hugs on the sideline, the freshman, with his coming out party today. Bobby Berger in the game, another senior. Uh oh, a timeout. Confusion. <laughs> well, <laughs> that kind of figures, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. And that's okay. I mean, Brian Costello, six foot two, two ten. Probably never thought he'd be having a conversation on the sideline with Brian while a game was going on. That's pretty good, man. Good Tommy Reese with a big smile. That's great. Much easier to take this as a new quarterback to be in shotgun and not have to worry about the center quarterback exchange. Hughes. A little alley somewhere or other. Tackled by Martinez. Well, the Utah Utes will lose two in a row after winning eight straight, and they'll take on San Diego State next week and then go to their arch rival BYU. And for Notre Dame. The Yankee Stadium matchup with Army looms, and as we said, Notre Dame really needing something good to happen. Got it, and then some here today on Senior Day. Bunch of different guys in there. Dan Franco, a senior wide receiver. Bobby Berger, another senior. Castello with a kneel down. The victory formation. They said that was his favorite one to signal in. <laughs> the victory formation, the take a knee. Manti Teo and the Irish defense did themselves proud today in something that all the undergrads wanted to do, and that was give their seniors who have been through so much during their time at Notre Dame to give them a proper send-off with a victory for the first time in three years. It was no fluke. It was a resounding Notre Dame victory over the 14th ranked Utes of Utah for Shaky Smithson and his teammates 
A long afternoon at Notre Dame Stadium in the rain. Their first ever meeting against Notre Dame does not end well. And after losing to Syracuse and UConn, two underdogs the last two senior days, Notre Dame finally has something to smile about. And as they walk across to face the student section for the playing of the alma mater, it will be a sweet moment for the seniors instead of the bitter disappointment from the seniors the last two years. Alex? Coach Kelly, how do you describe this moment? Well, it's it's emotional. Uh, it's been a tough uh, couple of weeks. And uh, adversity, you know, struck our, our group. And, uh, you know, sometimes it elicits qualities that you never knew you had. And uh, the qualities were on display today. Our kids played really hard and uh, finished out this nonsense that we can't finish games. It was a good victory for our football team. Yeah, a lot of people didn't think that you could beat this team today. So many offensive weapons, a very good football team. What did you learn aside from the finishing factor about your football team today? Just don't don't play with a reputation. Just go play with character and don't worry about what other people expect of you. I think when we, we, we focus too much of our time on other people's expectations instead of our own and our kids really bought into that this past week. We had a great week of practice and we just came out and played today. What did you learn about your freshman quarterback? He's got uh, some moxie, you know. Um, it was a little shaky early on. We had to have some conversations, but you know he takes coaching well and uh, makes some really big plays for us to to extend in the third quarter. I can't let you go without asking you about your defense today. Yeah, they were outstanding today, and again, it was about minimizing big plays. Their big plays have been really the difference all year for them. We were able to contain those uh, and, and got a good rush when we needed. We played complete defense. All 11 guys played well today. Congratulations, Coach. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thanks, Alex. And now the playing of the alma mater, Notre Dame, our mother. Students joining the players on the field. <laughs> 